Hi folks, we're back on the uh, Astra G, the Mark IV Astra at the moment. Sharon's got a right grinding noise when she puts her feet on the brake. So um, I've gone out and bought a new set of discs and pads for it. I've not looked at it yet, I've not been well, so um, I shouldn't actually out, be out in there doing this. But needs must, this comes first. And uh, let's get the wheels off. I've actually jacked the car up. So let's jack, get the wheels off and let's have a look at the state of these discs. Right, as I say, I've got the uh, 17 mil on the impact wrench here. So let's get these undone. There we go. Last one. There we go. All right. Let's get that out of the way. Wow, they're low folks, very low. As you can see there, there's no meat on them whatsoever and the rubbing is probably that little lip there. So as I say, lucky enough, I've bought some new pads anyway. So uh, let's get these clips off first there. Undo the two carrier bolts at the back there, which should be a seven mil Allen key. Get the caliper out of the way and then we can have a look and see what we're left with. So we'll just prise this clip out of there. I should pull it out of there, right? They can get rusted in them, so be careful. I've known it to break off there and get stuck in there. So just be a bit gentle with them. They do get full of brake dust. There we go. So you can actually buy them if they do snap anyway. So uh, just something to note. We'll take them little caps out. You've got one there and there's one down here as well. Just prise them dust caps out. And that should be a seven mil Allen bolt in there. So you've got to undo them and then we can lift this caliper carrier out of the way. Right, so that should be a number seven, which it is. Stick me three eighth drive in there. And hopefully they shouldn't be that tight, these ones, folks. Ah, here we go. Uh, shouldn't be that tight. There we go. Right, let's get these out. And these are the carriers, pins, for the main caliper. Because we've been getting a bit of squealing brakes as well, so uh, just something to be aware of, that these should be lubed up as well, cleaned. As you can see, they've got a little bit of uh, crap around them. And then you've got to sort of give them a wiggle and a pull to try and get the pin out, because they can get stuck in them rubbers sometimes, folks. So you might have to give them a little bit of a wiggle and a pull There we go, it's coming out now. There we go, that one's a bit stiffer, that one. And as you see, all that crap around it, that can stop your caliper from floating, which means that uh, your brakes can get stuck on. Right, okay, that's that done. Right, okay, so this caliper now should be free. Now, it'll probably be tight on here because uh, that piston will be right out, so there's very little room for manoeuvre here. So we've just got to try and lever it off as best we can. And this way it can get a bit tricky if you've got a disc with a big lip on it a lot of wear on it but you don't want to dangle this you've got a very short stubby brake line there as well which you've got to be careful of you don't want to overstretch that we're getting there i think we're getting there folks just so tight there we go oh i can see that, that pad right at the back has been right grinding on the metal you'll see that in a minute hold on I've got a hook here, just to hook it up on there when I take this off eventually. There we go. So I'm just swinging that round. Look, I'm not putting no strain on that. Just hang that up there like that. I'll just move that out of the way. There we go. All right, so that can stay there. Wow, look at that. Look. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look. Rubbing down on the back of the caliper. That's really low, isn't it? <laughs> That's the thing, so we've been doing a lot of long journeys recently and uh, normally that wear indicator should come on. But it doesn't seem to be attached to anything, look. Perhaps it's just a visual indication. Anyway, that's that one out. Let's just get that rear pad out. And look at that one, folks, look. But that's the rear pad, look at that. So obviously if you're going down that low, you've got to change the disc as well. Right, so here's my T30. 
There should be a T30 in there, but unfortunately my T30, that end, is broke. <clears throat> so I've only got one that end. So I'm just going to leave it out, hopefully. It shouldn't be that tight, this one. Oh, it will be there, won't it? Because my disc is rotating, I'm just going to put that screwdriver in there for a minute. There we go. Did that turn? Oh no, look. <laughs> That's not working. Let me try and find a proper torx bit in there, folks, because if I don't undo that, I've got to drill it out, and that's even more problems. Right, so here's our T30 on there, so I'm just going to try and crack that. They shouldn't be that tight, but you never know, do you? Oh, don't start turning. Oh, no, here we go. That looks like it's rounding off, folks. <laughs> Would you believe it? That T30 could cause me lots of hassle. So... I'm just going to try and tap that in there, that's rounded off. Sometimes giving it a crack can free it off a little bit. But if it don't turn, you're in trouble. Stop that from spinning. No. Nope. There's loads of meat on the other side. What, is there? Of a right, well, I'm probably going to have to put a slot in that and try and knock it down, get it out, folks. So let's just have a look at the other side, because uh, Gary's giving me hand round here. He's doing this side, so you reckon there's a lot more meat on this side, is there? Three quarters of a pad. Wow, look at that. See, folks? That's and that a, could be... That's an Allen bolt on this one. What is? That. <coughs> oh, is it should be a T30, yeah. But I might be able to knock an Allen screw in there. We can try that, maybe. Maybe the pins on the other side were sticking and keeping the brakes on if this one's not wound down like that. So, um, what are you looking for? I don't want this one, is it? Yeah, we'll try that first. So, he's going to try and crack that with that. You want a screwdriver, hold on. Right, just whack that in the disc, folks, and you, uh, you'll you be able to turn it. That's it. So, leave that on there. I'll try that one with this one. Otherwise, I've got to put a slit in it and drill it out. Yeah, there's a chance I may be able to knock that in there. You know what, that might not be a T30, that might be a bloody... I looked online there, folks, and they said it was a T30 in there. So it just shows you, innit? Let's just try this. No. Maybe knocks the next size in. I can see me having to drill it out. Oh, I've got it. <laughs> oh, one last ditch attempt, and I've got it. And before I do anything else, let's just take that out. I really should put a new one in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a slot in it. Now, a lot of cars don't have them fitted, folks. So uh, it wouldn't be disastrous if I didn't put one back in. But because there is one there, I obviously will put it back in. But uh, that was terrible. That was just on the verge of me drilling that out. Look, unbelievable. So, I think the next thing is, I don't think these come out, or they show them coming out online with that on there. But obviously, as you can see there, look, you can't actually get them out. So you've got to take the carrier off as well. Show them that one, Gary. Show them the thickness of the pads on that one, look. See? They're like blinking new pads. So, uh, the pins on this one must have been sticking in to stop the carrier floating. <coughs> You've got a difference on them. Look, here, look, look at that, folks, look. That's a typical example of the pads being stuck on via them floating pins, what I showed you. So them pins over there, Gary, pass them over here. They're gonna want a good clean up. There's a big ridge on that, isn't there, look. But we'll all get a good clean up on them anyway. And also these little channels here, give them a good clean out as well, what the pads ride on. Yeah, right, well, at least we've got that off. I'm gonna do the two 18 mil bolts at the back and then we can take that carrier off and get this disc off. These are the two carrier bolts, folks. These bottom and top ones, they're 18 mil. So I've got my um, breaker bar here just to start them off with. Okay, and just give them a crack off. They're not too bad, actually. I've known them a lot tighter. So that's that one. And crack that one. 
Yep, yeah, there we go. Right there, cracked. Wrenching out. And this is the opportunity you want to just take to have a look underneath, folks. I know last year I put a new um, suspension on this car. Had new springs and new dampers and uh, the brake pads and discs at that time was all okay. That's why I didn't bother changing them. And it had a new lower arm on as well. I think I put a new lower arm. This is a new one here. And these bolts are thread locked in as well, folks. So we'll be putting some more thread lock on this when we uh, put them back in. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a thread lock in there. There we go. So that can come out. That caliper bracket comes off. Right, and that disc now pulls off. Look at the state of that. Wow. Not in good condition, that one, folks. So I'll just get the old uh, brake cleaner out and give this a good clean round. The old wire brush. Get all the old grease off and then we'll just put some uh, copper slip around there. Right, let's clean all that. There we go. Right. So I'm going to spend a bit of time cleaning that bracket up, folks, and then I'll come back to you and then we'll refit everything. That's how clean the pins want to be. So I've cleaned that one up. And where's the other one? Hold on, I'll put it here somewhere. And as you can see, compared to that one there, all I've done is clean that with some brake fluid. Uh, sorry, brake cleaner rather, and a wire brush. So just give it a little bit of a clean. And get the old wire brush on it. And that takes it right off. And as I say, that's probably the cause of why it was sticking and why they worn just on one side. So we weren't getting efficient braking. That should have shown up in an MOT normally, if one side's braking more than the other or there's any brake drag. But, uh, <coughs> oh, I shouldn't be out here doing this. Gary's doing the other side still. Right, so that's the pins clean. Put that to one side. I've cleaned up the carrier with a wire brush and uh, all I'll do is these little grooves under here, they was full of rust so I've actually let the wire brush and also firewood inside there to get them smooth again because that rust in there could stop them from moving about as well so all I'll do with them is uh, literally give them a little bit of a protection just on the edges there with some uh, copper slip just like that and that will protect that rust on there as well right I've got the bolts where are they these two bolts here as you can see are full of crap and that's got to be wire brushed out so again folks just give them a bit of a bit of a clean and then re-lock tight them up again what you could do if you've got it i haven't got them here available at the moment is just run the uh, tap through the holes for the caliper just to clean out all the excess thread lock that was in there as well but uh, it should be okay so but if you have got taps then you could obviously do that as well right that's it that's all the maintenance work needed to be done apart from winding in the caliper which we'll do in a minute i'm going to get that uh, bracket on now so i'll see you in a minute and obviously before i put the carrier on i've got to put the discs on go so again just that little hole there lines up with our little hole there for our uh, thing but before we do that I'm just gonna get a bit of a uh, copper slip and just put it around the hub there just to ensure that if we have to take these off again in the future they should come off nice and easy don't go mad with it and I've actually just cut a slot in this because I'm actually going to have to reuse this screw for the moment, you see. So uh, I'm not going to tighten it in very, very tight. They shouldn't be tight anyway, but uh, I will be able to just chisel one of them edges down now uh, to put the new one in. But I will go to the uh, shop and get a new one of them anyway. So, All right, so that goes over there like that. Make sure your holes line up and just put your 
little retainer in there. Again, I haven't got to go mad here. Again, most cars don't have these in. Oh, thank you. That'll do. Just been bought a drink by Stacey. <laughs> so the carrier can now go over the top. It's that way. And then I can put my two bolts in, which I just thread locked as well. There's one in. And there's the second one in. That's it. So I'll just tighten them two up at the back and then I'll come back to you. Right, anyone know who this is? That's Project Man. Project Man, new merch in green. <laughs> he's actually finished the other side, so he's coming around here. Take over. Because I'm not well. So all that's back on now, folks. And uh, this is the caliper which you've got to wind back in, as you can see. It's right out, this one. And we've got the uh, rewind tool. If you've got a wind in one, folks, you'll have little notches maybe out of there, either side of the piston or some sort of uh, dots or whatever. So that lets you know this is a winding one. This one hasn't got any of them, so it should just push straight back in. Right, so literally just push it back in. It shouldn't be too tight, folks. Now you will hear people say you need to take the cap off of the reservoir. You don't need to do that if you know the history of the car and I know that that brake fluid has not been topped up since this has happened. So all that will happen is, is that will push back into the uh, reservoir. But if you feel like you want to take the brake cylinder off, the cap off the cylinder, you do that. But as I say, I know the history of this vehicle. There you go, virtually back in now. And all you're doing is pushing that back into the um, the brake reservoir. So we know it hasn't been filled up that brake reservoir, so uh, there will be no problem there. Yeah, very handy kits these folks, if you've uh, not got one of them. You, you'll struggle trying to push it back in otherwise, so best to get the right tool for the job. You uh, used to have anti-squirrel plates on them. These are all included on the back sale already. You can see them there. So you don't actually need to put any copper slip or any lubricant on the back of them pads, folks, as you did in the old days. Again, a controversial subject, because a lot of people still do it. But also, making sure that the boots inside are clean as well, folks. So, And the final thing to put in is the uh, spring back in them holes, and then you just lever it over the edge of the, uh, the carrier, and just tap them pins back in there like that, folks. And that's the job done. There you go. So we'll just plonk that wheel back on. And that's what uh, helps with putting the wheels on and off, folks, is that uh, copper slip around that hub. Because we've had it before where these wheels actually seize right on and uh, you can't get them off. Right, we'll let Gary do them up and then we'll give it a test. There we go, folks. That's uh, working fine now. That's got that paint on it, which you haven't got to remove. It's a special paint that comes off. But uh, looking round at the uh, reservoir now, as you can see, it's up to the max. Where before it was a bit low there. You didn't see that. I didn't show you that. And we did have to take the cap off because it automatically fills back up again. So all that you hear about, you've got to take the cap off. Not necessary. So there you go, folks. Come up against a couple of little problems there, which you have to overcome. But uh, if you were to take it to a garage, it would have cost you a hell of a lot more money you pay. 80 pounds 100 pounds for an hour's labor there so i've just saved that here doing the job ourselves anyway thanks very much hope you've enjoyed this we have got a playlist for the uh, astro mark 4 and loads of other playlists as well if you want to take a look at them and do have a little binge watch of the videos on my channel i'm sure you'll enjoy them anyway thanks a lot we'll see you in the next video and until then bye for now <laughs>